Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video I'm going to take you along with me while I make my own clearing spray. And here at Spirea, I share videos that weave together plant wisdom, holistic health, self-sufficiency with just a dash of magic. If this sounds interesting to you, I'd love for you to stick around. So I absolutely love smoke cleansing. I love it so much that I've actually done a video about it and I'm going to link that up here because if that's more what you're sort of looking for and in information on smoke cleansing, then you'll want to check out that link. But there are some times and places where maybe lighting up a piece of sage or you know burning a mugwort stick is probably not appropriate like what if you work in an office setting and you just want to clear the energy in that space what if your partner is scent sensitive and every time you burn something they start wheezing right there are chances or times when a liquid version of a smoke cleanse would be really helpful because we're still capturing that energetic essence that we're looking for without the smoke. And so I love making clearing sprays or liquid smudges or liquid smoke cleanses. Um, and so I'm gonna show you some of the herbs that I'm gonna be harvesting today on the property. Just to give you an idea, this isn't a hard and fast recipe. This is more uh, working with what you're inspired to work with, what plants do you wanna play with in this realm? There are so many options available to us. So let's go walking through my property and I'll show you what herbs I'm gonna be harvesting today. So I'm over by one of many mugwort patches I have in, on this property. I've really only planted two plants, but I have this popping up everywhere now. Funny story about this area. I'm gonna see if my husband can get a good picture. When we first moved here, I put a comfrey here. You can see the comfrey's already um, completely flowered and is you know, nearing the end of its life cycle. And after tapping into the energy, uh, specifically the energy of this area, the plants were like, you need to plant mugwort here. So I thought I had dug up. I, I'm telling you, I had a massive hole. I dug down so deep and I thought I got all of the comfrey root out. Turns out clearly I didn't. And I now have this fascinating comfrey mugwort hybrid thing that's happening over in this area. And the two seem to get along fairly well, um, but I'm going to be working, like I said, specifically, I'm going to be working with mugwort right now. So I'm going to get to harvesting that. Um, if you are, if you have a background similar to mine in uh, sort of Germanic areas of the world, Scandinavia, uh, Iceland, Norway, you're going to want to get to know plants like mugwort. Mugwort was a very common smoke cleanse for that area of the world. Again, those Icelandic, Scandinavian, Germanic regions. And I absolutely love including it in my liquid smoke cleanses. So mugwort is a great one. And when you use a plant like this, um, I'll get, again, get my husband to zoom in really, that the stalk is really, really thick and fibrous and kind of inert. So what I'll do, and I'll show you this when we get inside, is I'm gonna strip all the leaves and flowers off of this and discard this main stalk. Um, the, purpose of a stalk in a plant is to hold the plant up so that its flowering portions and leaves can uh, reach sunlight and so they're mostly fiber and mostly inert so even when i'm making something like a liquid smoke cleanse i always want to include the most potent parts of the plant and not water down my medicine this would include like if i was making tincture with this or infused oil i would always want to discard the stalk so mugwort is a great one but i have another plant here that i'm going to be adding this year because as I was doing research on the flower essence of this plant, I realized it would be perfect to add to a clearing spray, and that is yarrow. And I'm pretty sure I've got a video on yarrow if, on its medicinal properties. If I do, I will link that for you guys. But yarrow is an amazing protector. And there are, if you look into some of the mythology and folklore around yarrow and how it got its botanical name, Achillea millifolium, you'll start to learn about um, 
you know, the association with Achilles, Achilles' heel, and why Achilles' mother uh, bathed him in a bath of yarrow. It was meant to protect him. And of course, the only area that the yarrow didn't uh, cover was his heel that she held him by when she dipped him into the yarrow bath, where we get our term Achilles' heel. And of course, what was his demise? But the protective powers of this plant are so magical that I definitely want to include it in my clearing spray. Another one that I love to include is lavender. And lavender has again been burned for smoke cleanses in cultures all across the world. And I just so happen to have some really lovely lavender flowering here. And I want to harvest this anyway, so that way I encourage um, proper growth next year. And I don't have a lot of like woody stems and stalks. So I'm going to harvest down here and I'll get some leaves and flower. Again, just like that mugwort, I'm going to discard this stalk especially if you want to do infused oils or make medicine because it's really rather inert. So I'm going to get to harvesting some lavender. Other really beautiful options that you might have in your garden right now would be things like rosemary. You can absolutely include sage, either garden sage or white sage if you grow it. If you don't grow it, just ensure you're getting your white sage from ethical sources. There are some unethical practices happening right now with white sage. And I think I might, I actually have some dried from a plant I grew last year. Here in Ontario, it will grow as an annual. And one plant that I get from Richter's is enough to last me at least a year, if not longer. So it's really all you need. You can even grow it in a pot. Uh, however, substituting garden sage works really nicely too. So I'm really lucky to have access to cedar on my property as well. Uh, they are my neighbor's plants, but they come right over across the fence line. So I harvest from them frequently. And if you are indigenous to Canada, the United States, cedar is something you'd be really familiar with. I'm getting eaten alive while I'm filming this segment. That's awesome. Um, so I will certainly be harvesting some of these leaves for my clearing spray because I really enjoy the energy that it adds. So welcome to my kitchen in summer. It is uh, always busy. Yesterday I made a bunch of tinctures. You can see those over my shoulder there, some infused oils. I have to-do lists scattered everywhere around the property. And uh, that's just how life goes. There's jars everywhere. I always do my best to make sure they're labeled. But now that we're inside, we can start to add our herbs to whatever size jar you want. I mean, think about how much you would use and utilize maybe for a single person Household, 100 milliliters is more than enough for you to use as a clearing spray every year. I like to make larger batches so that way I can give some to friends and family. I may have some of this available on my website too. So if I do decide to do that, I'll post a link below for folks who would rather just purchase from a maker as opposed to make them yourself. What's really neat about this process is you can very easily marry dried herbs, fresh herbs, you can add resins to this, you can add flower essences. There are certain flower essences like crab apple and holly that are excellent for clearing sprays. You can add in gemstones as well, ensuring that they don't, uh, like if you put selenite or something in there, it'll just disintegrate. But say something like a crystal quartz would be really great for clearing, or if you wanted more of that protective measure, you could add in something like obsidian or uh, black onyx. Because we're not gonna be taking this internally, we don't have to worry about the gemstones leaching into this because we're just gonna be using this topically and as a room spray. So I have a bunch of my fresh herbs here. I have some dried sage. This is sage that I grew last year. And uh, my husband is actually very scent sensitive to white sage and so using it in the clearing spray is going to be perfect for me. I have some whole, I'll show you, some whole juniper berries that are going to be really nice to add in. I really try to incorporate as much from my lineage and my background as possible so that's why I really love working with the mugwort and the juniper and I'm just going to drop that handful of berries in right there. No measurements, a lot of this is intuitive and what feels right, working with what you have. Another lovely option and I have here is some frankincense resin. And so anyone who works with the essential oil, they actually extract it from the resin, but I prefer working with the resin. I infuse this in oil. I make room sprays with this. I really love working with frankincense resin. So that's something else that I'll drop in. If you grow uh, sweet grass, sweet grass would be really beautiful too. So what I'm gonna do here uh, is just run my fingers the opposite way the leaves grow and they'll strip right off and I'm just going to drop them 
into my jar. In this case, I'm probably not gonna do a lot of chopping. If I do, I'll just use my handy dandy scissors here. And like I said, when we were out harvesting, I'm gonna discard this stem. I don't want this in there. It's the same thing with the lavender. I'm just gonna run my fingers in the opposite direction in which the leaves grow, snap off the flowers and put those in. So I'm gonna putter away here and fill up my jar with all of this herbal magic. So once you have your jar, mine's almost full. That's usually what I tend to go for if I'm using mostly fresh herbs, but because I have the frankincense resin and the juniper berries in here as well, I'm okay with it not being completely full. All you're gonna do now is top off with some witch hazel. Now I know some folks have used alcohol for this as well. You can, um, I prefer the cost effectiveness of witch hazel personally, and I find it does a really great job of extracting everything that I need. So I'm just gonna fill my jar here. Now, if you are using a plastic lid, there we are, like me, you're done, you just put your plastic lid on. If you're using a metal lid, you will want a piece of parchment paper as a barrier, so that way everything in here doesn't start to erode away at the metal. I'm not sure if it's the witch hazel or the combination of the witch hazel and the herbs pulling out things like tannins and resins, but you really don't wanna lose, especially tinctures, you really don't wanna lose metal or lose your medicines when you take the lid off and find that flecks of metal have dropped into what you're making. So what I'm gonna do now, and you can see that the um, frankincense has already sunk to the bottom, I'll give it a good shake. And I'm gonna want this to sit for at least three to four weeks. It will start to look, if you've included resins, like either amber or frankincense or myrrh or anything you're working with, it will start to go cloudy on you and you can actually already see it's a bit cloudy here. So I'm gonna want this to sit for about three to four weeks at least. And then I will strain out all of the herb material. I'll squeeze it all out as much as possible. If you haven't seen my video on basic herbal equipment, I'm gonna link that up here because potato ricer, it's the way to go. I'll squeeze all that goodness out and then you're just gonna transfer it to a spray bottle. If you want to add things like Bach flower remedies, you can add them now or you can add them when you bottle it. Um, any flower essences, like if you have flower essences that support the chakra systems or ones that you've made yourself can be added at any point. And if you do decide you say you want to add some gemstones, you would add them at this point now and then strain them out with the herbs. And like I said, just bottle into a spray bottle. So just like smoke cleansing with combusting or burning herbs, intention is really important. So when you're using your clearing spray, you're in a space where you have the intention of energetically clearing a room or cleansing your own energetic body. Um, and so being in that kind of mindful state before you use it, I find adds to the effectiveness of what we've created here today. You can use this, like I said, on your person. I would always do a test patch just in case some of it is gonna come in contact with your skin. So inner elbow is a really great place because if you're gonna react, it's gonna be there. So you can, like I said, clear an, you can clear a room, you can clear your physical body, you can use this around your pets. Um, again, maybe not spraying directly, but if you just wanna clear a certain area, you can use it indoors, outdoors, really, there's no limit to how you can use a product like this. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave those below. And until next time, this is Corinne from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health, wellness, and happy clearing.